All right, yeah. so the next topic is the Linux container internals by great Ume Bewe. Bewe, Bewe, yeah. Yes. Uh, <laughs> it's a DevOps and Linux um, engineer with a passion for open source and communities. So you can talk to um, Great about Linux, everything DevOps, everything cloud system. And when he's not into all of this, he's out there boxing and reading random stuff. So over to you, Great. Okay. Um, thank you very much for having me. My name is Great. And uh, yeah, I'll be speaking uh, about um, container, Linux container internals. So like we're speaking about um, the features that make um, containers possible. So um, yeah, let me just share my screen. Trying to do that now. Yeah. So can you see my screen? Okay. So my screen is off now, right? And I don't know if, if you can hear me just. Yes, it is. Okay, okay. So um, I was talking about the Linux container internal. So what um, really make, uh, makes them possible and how they really work. So um, yeah, okay. So uh, meet me. My name is Great um, Zero X Great on Twitter, and um, I'm an SRE. I do SRE and DevOps at TCI. So TCI is a company based in the UK, and um, we basically help. Um, organizations move to cloud native and we'll also build products for them. So um, I'm a Linux fanboy, pretty much. <laughs> uh, as far as I can remember, I've been using Linux um, since about the age of nine. Um, yeah, we had Linux computers at home. So um, I talk about the Linux kernel and um, containers. And uh, yeah, I love the chicken and chips. Um, I also like the technic networks. I'm generally funny and uh, I'm weird sometimes. So. That's that. Um, yeah, so just to lighten the mood, um, this is how I walk around. And um, so as soon as you say hi to me, I smile. So in case um, you see me anywhere uh, <laughs> and I'm burning my face, don't hesitate to say hi. I'm always smiling. Yeah. So um, yeah, just a disclaimer, um, just uh, so that we can set things straight. Um, Containers don't run on Docker. That is like um, a misconception or a misrepresentation, uh, misrepresentation because containers don't run on Docker. Docker is just one of those several um, container engines that interact with container runtimes, um, container runtimes like container, um, run, and the rest of them, which in turn ask the kernel um, to set up containers. So other container engines you can find is like Cryo and um, Podman. There are some uh, examples of container engines you can find around. Um, so the outline um, is pretty much containers. Uh, they will look at the building blocks, um, C groups, namespaces, um, copy and write. Then we'll talk a little about um, container runtimes, uh, Docker, run, systemd, and spawn. And um, then we'll do a little demo, just, yeah. So what are containers? Um, I'm sure you have heard um, what containers are. Containers like um, helpers, okay? So containers is like um, a form of operating system virtualization. So this is not like a full virtualization because containers depend on the um, system kernel, like the Linux kernel to like, um, to set up and um, yeah, so containers is like a form of virtualization and isolation because um, containers are isolated from their host system. They have their own um, um, PIDs, that is process IDs, and um, they have their own network and all that. So containers help you to package your application code together with these dependencies so that you can run them in, in between environments. Um, so containers come with uh, portability where you can run them on different environments. No need to start um, um, installing dependencies. So let's say, for example, you're on a Windows, uh, you're on a, a Mac OS, and I built a Python application, and I give you the code, okay, I want you to run this application. So instead of you um, starting to like run Python, um, installing Python, um, installing like the um, libraries, like let me say, for example, uh, Panda and the rest, instead of installing that, it's already packaged into a container. So you can just run the container 
and everything will run perfectly. So um, one thing to take note here is that containers are run as processes on the operating system. So this is the um, what we should take note of here um, because I won't be talking much on containers. I'll be talking about containers like from the, from a higher level, from an operating system level, how um, containers are run on the system than containers um, um at the um i'll be talking from a lower level um yeah so that's that i'll be talking about containers as processes so yeah so we have the um control groups so control groups is one of the um it's a special mechanism provided by the linux kernel which allows us to allocate like resources um like cpu memory um um devices network to a, a group a group of processes or a set of processes so like i said container around as processes so c groups able us to like um give memory to um like limit memory to um a container a container is a process of course limits memory to a container limit um a cpu to a container and all that so the reason for even c groups are the first that uh, was c groups were built as a uh, security feature so it was actually built as a honeypot so that um for attackers so we have um some c group subsystems we have the memory pid um cpu set freeze uh, block io so all these subsystems are what you can control on um what you can the amount you or what you can control uh to assign to a process so um i'll just talk about a few of them so block io um, um set limits to read and write um from and to block devices um net um net um cls allows to mark um network packets from a tax uh, like allow to mark a network target um, um packets to a group and CPU uses the scheduler to provide um, CPU tax uh, access to the processor resources. And then PID sets number of, um, uh, that is, it sets a limit of um, number of processes in a group. So we can limit number of processes that can run in a container. So um, subsystems, um, C group subsystems like um, PID makes that um, possible. So um, for namespaces, um, yeah. So YC group will say, I, okay, I'm going to limit what you are going to use. Then namespaces will limit what you can see. So it's, um, I, I can give an example of um, Kubernetes um, namespaces. So namespaces in Kubernetes. So let's say we have this namespace called dev, and we have this namespace called um, prop. So the objects, Kubernetes objects like replica sets, secrets, and the rest of them can be grouped into a namespace. While in another namespace, like say a prod, it has its own um uh, what is it called? Um objects too. So these objects can't really uh, Access, um, let me see, um, a pod in the in prod cannot really access um, a secret in dev because there's like a, um, a form of isolation between them. So, lim um, just take note C groups limits what you can use, like in quantity, and the namespaces um, limits what you can see. So, um, we have different um, types of namespaces. So, we have uh, the mount namespace which are uh, MNT, which controls man points. So upon creation of um, containers, the um, current mount namespace are copied to the new um, namespace, but man points created after was not propagated between those um, namespaces. So um, we also have the um, PID. So it provides um, names, uh, namespaces, uh, it provides processes with an indep uh, independent set of process IDs. So PID namespace is what makes containers think that they have this form of isolation. So now, for example, 
a process now uh, let's say we have an nginx um docker container uh, I, I i won't mention docker let's say we have um an nginx container um the nginx might be running with a pid of four or five or whatever on the container but outside that container that it will be running on the whole system it will be running as a different pid so this is what make full containers into thinking that they have their um their own their, that they have their they are in control of what they can do so this is um, one of the features of namespaces um that uh, enables that so um network net namespaces visualizes um the network stack so upon creation, a network namespace contains only a loopback interface. So um, once you create a container that is at default, it's, uh, it's only uh, a loopback interface that you are going to have. I'm going to show an example of this um, in the demo. I would like give an example of um, how we can use network namespace uh, namespaces. So um, also, we can also look at the user namespaces um provides um privilege uh, isolation and the uh, user identification segregation so like the uid and the guid uh so like it gives you this kind of um, security feature i think it was recently that it came into the linux scanner I, okay yeah recently it came into the linux scanner i think at uh, 3.8 yeah so we also have the ipc ipc um I don't, I don't even know if anybody cares about IPC, um, inter-processing, uh, inter-process, um, communication. So, um, this was even recently added to, to the, um, Linux kernel, um, to like isolate, um, inter-process, um, communications. So, yeah, um, clone is one of the system calls. Clone is actually a system call in the Linux kernel that um enable us to use namespaces so um if you you can actually like um look at the code um in the linux scanner and like try to have an understanding of what clone does so um yeah this is how process is called clone um if you can look for the int clone um function there so it calls it by the stack um passes some flags to it and um the parent um uh, TID. So um, next, um, we have the copyright. Copyright. Copyright is really, really a complex topic. Like it's going to even have its own different presentation on that. So copyright is a bit complicated. Copyright is um, like an optimization strategy. So if you have also noticed, let's say you pull a Docker container and maybe you pull another uh, Docker container, sometimes it's going to tell you that this layer already exists, right? So copy on write makes um, this stuff smart enough. So copy on write like does sharing, sharing of um, these um, files and other. So uh, we have different um, file systems which copy on write uses. We have the AUFS, BTRFS, um, VFS, and device mapper. So um, I, th I don't think docker has to worry about this because docker will just um you don't really have to worry about this because docker will just use the most um, suitable file system docker is intelligent enough to do that so um but that stuff we also have um capabilities so we have um capabilities that enable you to say okay i want um this capability side time on this container and um, yeah, and we also have S Linux, so security enhanced Linux. So um, security enhanced Linux, most um, SI admins use um, security enhanced Linux so that you can set um, some kind of, have more control um, over who can access this um, container. So that's the part you have to look out for. And then we have the container runtime. Like I said, we're going to come into this. So we have the Docker engine. Container, OpenVS. Oh, I um, duplicated here. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, yeah, Docker Engine actually uses um, Container and Runk to um, for the um, container creation because what actually made Docker stand out was that 
they had they improved the um they improved the developer experience using containers before containers were just something that um uh, most likely you see with assign admins and all that but docker really made this easy with their whole family of tools so that's why it's called an engine um we also have lxc lxc has been existing in fact yeah there's, there's no there's no there's no record of lxc um in the Linux kernel, you won't even see anything about Linux uh, containers in the Linux kernel because the containers you might see is a, like a very different thing from um, the containers you know, like it's a, a bit different thing. So, Alexi was one of the um, container technologies that we are there, and we also have um, OpenVS too, which was uh, also one of the um, um, container technologies that existed. So um yeah, so um we are gonna go over um ahead to a demo. So um for this demo, we'll be looking at um creating um a network namespace, then we can also test um copy and write um with a uh, union fs. So um if you can if you can um if yeah, I'm trying to share my screen now, so I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm trying to share my terminal. Um, I can't find my terminal. I don't know why. Just open it again. Okay. Yeah, it's up now. Okay, so can you see my terminal? I um, just need a bit of confirmation. Yes. Hello? Yes. Okay, okay, sure. Okay. Um, so just go ahead on it now and uh, yeah. Just trying to um, kind of adjust it. So, um, so um, yeah, we we'll try to um, look at the namespaces that exist on my PC. So we'll just do LSNS. So LSNS would like come up with this um, with the namespaces that exist in my system. So we have the timed namespace, we have the C group namespace, we have the PID namespace. UTS, IPC, and the rest of them. So, um, yeah, for um, browsers like um, Chrome and Brave, they'll most likely have a lot of PID um, namespaces. And uh, yeah, they'll also have the uh, network namespace like uh, um, for network and the rest of them. So um, let's try to list, um, let us do this alias, yeah. So I don't have to type sudo every time. So I would say sudo ls um, uh, slash proc. So um, we are going to check a process. So if I do this, um, ps ox. So we are going to actually check which namespace um, my first process belongs to. So the um, init init um, um, command like the init process. So let's see which namespace it belongs. Um, so that's just pretty simple. Um, sudo s ls, yeah. So um, we can see that this process um, belongs to a C group, IPC, um, different type or, of namespaces. So this can actually be checked for um, or all um, processes. So then um, we'll move on to say, okay, um, so we're doing um, the network namespace. So say um, SIP add net NS, IP net NS add um, namespace one. 
then say IP maintenance add namespace two. So we have two namespaces now. So say IP maintenance list. So let's just list the namespace. So we have namespace two and um, namespace one. So now let's um, create a pair of virtual um, internet devices. So say IP link, I always um, forget to add sudo, don't mind me. Um, VTH1 type, say VETH pair name VTH2. So we just added, um, we just add, added a virtual internet device. So if I do IP IF config, yeah, so yeah, you can see we are the um, visual internet is created. So now let's um, link each device, each device is created to a namespace. So link set, Maintenance namespace one. So we link VTH one to namespace one. Uh, oh, so the, um, we link it to, uh, VTH two to namespace two. Mm, yeah. So we have a pretty correct here. So um, let's bring up, let's try to bring up the devices and assign um, IP addresses to them. So not announce um, exec namespace one IP link um, set dev vth one up. So do it again. Sorry. Um, yeah. So. So IP net ns exec namespace one ip address so i'm adding like an ip to it one nine two one six eight um, one point one point one slash two four then dev v eth one so do again um i think it's high time i run this um uh, with um okay and it's the two two um main space two so now let's verify the connectivity between the two namespace as it's enabled by the um virtual ethernet pair tunnel so from the namespace one since we have linked them so if it's in namespace one we should be able to ping the name um the second one and from the second namespace we should be able to ping the first namespace so let's say sudo sudo okay s ip net ns exec namespace one ping um so let's just do about five pings 192.168.1.2. So yeah, um, it's working and uh, it's like trying to access the second namespace and um, ping in that. So um, we should be able to do that from the um, second one to, to ping this. So it works. So um, yeah. So I'll just go ahead and delete these um, namespaces. Delete namespace one. So I create a list. Um, yeah, I no longer um, have to listen. So this is something that most of these container runtimes do under the hood. They try to create network namespaces and the rest of them so that you can get this interoperability uh, between um, your containers, providing network access to your containers. So um, yeah, and then we'll also go over the second demo. Um, 
this won't take time. So um, it's just to show how um, these container runtimes also do um, um, copy our rights. So um, make the arrow, so let's say make the arrow KCD1. So let's talkify inside KCD1. Hello one. I'll touch hello two. So we'll make another DR KCD two. Oh, make the KCD two. Make the KCD two. And then we'll touch. So oh. already as is. So, like we see, do we can say hello three and hello four. So then we'll try to make a union between these two directories. So, so let's say make KCD union. So say union FS. Um, they are um, KCD. One and KCD two into union KCD union KCD union. Yeah. So if we LS KCD union, you can see that this um, three files has been unioned together into a namespace. So under the hood, this is what um, container uh, runtimes kind of try to implement. I um, actually say you can also um, look into, okay, sorry. I can also say you should look into Boca. I don't know if I can type that, uh, okay. Uh, please look into Boca. Um, So um yeah, so Boca is actually an implementation of Docker in um in Bash. So um you can try to read the source code and um, you would um, see most of how um, these container runtimes um, implement um, these um, low level um, features of um, the um okay these low level features these low level features of the linux kernel would like to create um a container so that's that for my talk and um if you have any question you can just um leave them in the chat yeah uh, i think yeah he has done um sadiq has done that so if you have any questions on like this um you can try to like reach out to me or you can just write them on the chat and yeah so it was nice speaking with you and um i hope you have a great day thanks Awesome, that was a great presentation. Um, we don't have any questions yet uh, in the chat. Oh, thank you so much for that. Oh, I Greg. think Anita is having some network issues. <laughs> uh, internet, internet, yes. well, Mr. Support. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we, uh, here is a great Twitter handle at 0x. Great. The guy is great that his Twitter handle is in lit code itself. <laughs> <laughs> so you can reach out to him on Twitter and uh, share whatever questions you have. Uh, and he will be grateful to answer. But if you still have any, you can drop them in chat and he will be available on the YouTube channel to answer any of them in real time. Okay, someone just asked how C group and namespaces are used by containers. Okay, so um, 
groups and uh, namespaces are uh, used. Okay, like I said, I don't know if it came in late, but C groups is what limits the resources that containers can use, right? So it limits how many. Um, um, it limits like there are subsystems for C groups. You have the PID, the NET, um, the rest of them. So what C group does is like try to limit system resources that these containers can use, right? So like I said, C groups limits what you can use and namespaces um, limits what you can see. So namespaces is what uh, makes containers not to be able to see each, um, each other. Because if they are, uh, let's say this container is able to see the, um, the process of another container, that's really bad because we can have things like racing conditions and it's also a security issue. So namespaces is what brings in that isolation, right? Like how you can run multiple containers on your system. You can run Nginx, you can run BusyBox, you can run a, a lot of containers without having conflicts. But if namespaces doesn't exist, um things like um process ids will start clashing and um th even though that's a um, bit of a security issues um that is really bad so namespaces um is a feature of the linux kernel that like try to convince containers it's what full uh, containers that oh i am in my own system containers are not really aware of what is outside them Containers are only aware of their own selves. So namespaces is a kind of feature that enables that. Um, so I don't really know. Okay. Uh, yeah, demo. Okay, C group. Okay, yeah, I think I did this demo. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know if this demo is able to share the demo I, I did. Yeah, it, yeah, it shared it. Uh... What we will do later is the recording of the whole thing will be available subsequently. And uh, we'll also break each of the sessions so that you can have access to individual ones. So your guest, you can check our YouTube channel by Monday or Tuesday next week, and you will have his specific video so you can rewatch the parts where he did the demo. Okay, okay. Um, that's fine. Um, your search, um, you can also contact me on Twitter if you have any questions. So um kind of available to like answer your questions awesome uh thank you very much great uh we yeah. have uh our next session all right um, bye bye